when a rock spider goes to war with a lichen bark mantis, one of them will vanish forever. On a stony jungle floor, a rock spider waits patiently for her next victim. With her ultra-low profile and mottled disguise, she's equally at home on rocks or on trees, able to hide and hunt like a sniper. She's got very finely tuned sensory hairs on all of her legs, excellent vision with a very wide field of view. So she'll sit there motionless and just wait to detect a passerby. Cunning camouflage isn't this killer's only trick. She's also a spider speedster. These spiders are amongst the world's fastest animals. We're talking in the order of 60 body lengths per second. That would be the equivalent of us running at 250 miles an hour. Rotated legs hinge laterally instead of vertically, so she can move in any direction. A flattened body allows the spider to get herself out of a tight spot by getting into one. If the rock spider comes up against a serious threat, its first tactic is to run for the nearest nook or cranny, squeeze itself in, and hope that the predator can't follow it inside. A jumping spider is a quicksilver killer, but it's about to find itself between a rock and a hard place. It didn't even see the rock spider coming. There's no wrapping in silk or other fancy containment device. It's all about injecting the venom and then just waiting for it to do its work. <laughs> The rock spider isn't the only predator around these parts with stealth and speed. The lichen bark mantis gives the spider a run for its money. During the day, it hunts facing down on trees, and it holds itself very close to the bark. So it can sit out there in the middle of the day hunting and not be noticed. Unlike most mantids, the lichen bark mantis has a short, stubby body. But extra long legs make it quick off the blocks. This is such a fast little mantis. They really are pretty bold. And if they're threatened, they just zip away from the predators. Very little escapes the mantis' cold, unblinking gaze. Enormous compound eyes also colored to aid camouflage, are supremely powerful motion detectors. They move their heads from side to side to give them more binocular vision. And if something moves, they're on it very, very rapidly. It doesn't need great vision to spot this potential needle. A bright green Katie did is like a blazing neon sign over an all-night diner. Super sharp mandibles tear it to pieces. It's fast. It's stealthy. These mantids are cool. But this cool cat is about to face a far more formidable foe. The rock spiders come prowling for fresh meat. What happens when these two speedy stealth fighters duel to the death? They're both very capable ambush hunters. And they're both just waiting to pull the trigger when they detect the slightest sign that the other is about to spring into motion. Next, the tree terror meets the rock horror. Then, dressed to kill. And later, battle of the silk assassins. Midnight in the forest. Two shapeshifters face off. A rock spider turned tree climber is on a quest to kill. Waiting for it, a lichen bark mantis. 
The rock spider relies on large fangs and lethal venom. The lichen bark mantis has spiked arms and razor sharp mandibles. Which monster will survive to see the dawn? The spider's first move is her first mistake, giving away her position. The mantis's keen eyes are now trained on the intruder. The mantis makes a series of lightning-fast lunges. The spider evades. The difference between life and death here is reaction times measured in milliseconds. It's a deadly game of cat and mouse, each trying to gain the upper hand. This time, the mantis snares a leg, but the rock spider slips away once more. The spider knows she's in trouble. The mantis pounces. The rock spider throws off a leg as a life-saving decoy. Well, there's no turning back now. The mantis truly has the upper hand. There's no place to hide. The mantis charges. Raptorial legs clamp shut. Spines bite down on flesh. Outpaced, the rock spider is beaten at her own game. I've got to admit, on this one, I was sure that the rock spider was going to get this mantis. The spider doesn't have time for regrets. In a blur of slicing mandibles, the mantis helps the rock spider achieve her final and very convincing vanishing act. I would comment on the aftermath, but there's nothing to comment on. The rock spider has totally disappeared from the face of the earth. not for the faint-hearted. From the shadows, assassins strike without warning. They're fast and they're deadly. You can be impaled, clubbed, or torn limb from limb. It's no exaggeration to say that this is the insect equivalent of shark jaws. Death can be instant or drawn out. But it's coming. The bug world is full of spies with a license to kill. In this deadly game of high stakes espionage, any branch or leaf might be bugged. When a hooded mantis and a Brazilian wandering spider go for the jugular, it's all cloak and dagger. In the jungles of Central America, some of the deadliest predators are masters of disguise. From above or behind, the hooded mantis looks just like a leaf. But if you're prey and it's rearing above you about ready to strike, it looks more like a king cobra. And its bite 
is just as deadly. Not only is it invisible, the hooded mantis makes other bugs disappear. Like all good spies, the hooded mantis excels at surveillance. Two huge compound eyes give the mantis stereoscopic vision, an excellent view to a kill. It also deploys two extra-long antennae, each lined with tens of thousands of highly sensitive chemoreceptors. Free of debris, they pick up the faintest enemy transmission. The antenna are constantly detecting chemical and physical information, especially when the mantis is sizing up an opponent or prey. This is particularly important when it reaches that stage where the mantis can't risk taking their eyes off the opponent in case they suddenly launch an attack of their own. And its trademark move is always shaken, not stirred. The mantis uses strange rocking and shuddering as part of its behavioral camouflage repertoire. This helps disguise it as a flickering leaf and makes it hard to focus on. It'll use this tactic even while doing tiny little steps towards its victim. But the real threat are the legs themselves. Long raptorial limbs are lined with dagger-like spikes sharp enough to puncture human skin. The entire prey capture strategy of mantids revolves around remaining invisible to their targets, striking out of nowhere, pinning their prey with their spiked arms, and then delivering a series of killer bites. A katydid is an armored fighter who also kills for a living. But the hooded mantis has no trouble taking it down. That is a textbook raptorial arm lock. The caddy did has absolutely no way of fighting back. Super sharp mandibles, like the teeth of a great white, gouge the victim's head. And when the katy did's dangerous rear legs keep kicking, they are removed with clinical precision. This is a harsh lesson in monster bug indignity. If you struggle against a mantis, you're probably gonna end up in pieces before you die. But the hooded mantis is being tailed by an equally ruthless enemy agent. This skulking assassin is one of the world's most proficient killers. Wandering spiders are generalist predators, which means that they'll basically catch anything that they're capable of taking down. These are creepy spiders. The Brazilian wandering spider takes no prisoners. These guys have a really nasty venom. It actually kills a number of humans every year. Her powerful body and long legs are covered in dense hair. Each one is a sensor, picking up tiny vibrations, even changes in airflow, which she uses to lethal effect. A Katie did is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Its only hope is to sneak by unnoticed. This Katie did is trying to walk by the spider, pretend like it's blowing in the wind or that it's debris, that it isn't a living animal. But the spider is completely aware of exactly what it is and is going to go after it. Eventually, the spider makes its move. Not with blinding speed, but like a slowly grasping hand. Venom strong enough to kill a child brings instant death. 
The Brazilian wandering spider is considered to have the most potent venom of any spiders in the world. The venom contains a combination of neurotoxins that affect the way the nervous system works, and it causes a great deal of tissue damage. Now, digestive enzymes turn the katydid into green gumbo. But what happens when the Brazilian wandering spider meets its Cold War counterpart, the hooded mantis? Either one of these animals has the strength and the weapons to win this. These two ruthless agents share one creed, live and let die. Next, a jungle assassin goes for the jugular. Then, an armed colossus takes on an invading army. And later, murder with medieval weapons. In a seemingly peaceful Central American rainforest, a camouflaged hooded mantis is on an undercover assignment. A Brazilian wandering spider is also on a mission to kill. The mantid's spiked limbs and super sharp mandibles are more than a match for the spider's deadly fangs and super powerful venom. Two stone-cold assassins come face to face. So close, they are actually touching. So now the wandering spider and the hooded mantis are in contact with each other, but it really is who moves the fastest and where they attack. The spider backs off, wary. In a battle like this, there is no margin for error. The hooded mantis tries its favorite bluff. The praying mantis is hoping that its shuddering motion will let it get close to the spider without it recognizing that it has an opponent. But the spider isn't fooled. Like a Hollywood fight scene, the enemy agents are locked together in a precarious battle. The mantis is in the perfect position. Its mandibles could rip open the spider's belly. But it's too late. Like poison-tipped umbrellas, the spider's fangs puncture the mantis's thorax. Deadly neurotoxins flood the mantid's body. Within seconds, vital organs begin shutting down. The prospect of a massive feast has the spider's digestive juices flowing. Massive daggers slash the body to pieces. And it's sucked up like a mantis martini. So the king cobra of the mantids goes down. But you can't say he didn't score points for bravery. All that will be left is the mantid's hood, discarded like a dead spy's trench coat. When a giant rainforest mantis confronts a spiny leaf insect, it's a monster battle.
It's one of the rainforest's most bizarre citizens. A creature so strange, it could be from another world. In the bug world, spiny leaf insects are giants, growing up to five inches long. They're not only big, they're ugly. Spiny leaf insect wants to avoid a fight. Its first defense is the fact that it looks like a leaf. If a predator does get past the camouflage and detect a spiny leaf insect, it'll then rely on its behavior to try to scare off a predator by making itself look big and mean and horrible, like some sort of alien predator from another planet. Nature often saves scariness for the vegetarians. You see, they need to deter their predators rather than fight them. Although it looks like some kind of battle bot, the creature isn't naturally aggressive. Its heavy armor and razor spikes are for defense, an almost impenetrable shield. And if a predator does try to take a bite, it'll get a mouthful of those spikes. The spiny leaf insect also keeps a secret weapon. If threatened, the spiny leaf insect will resort to chemical warfare. It has glands that'll squirt out this colorless but extremely stinky liquid that'll deter most predators. A stinking, ugly, spiky giant should be left alone. But in the rainforest, there's one creature who's not so easily deterred. It's an evolutionary success story. The giant rainforest mantis. A strong arm assassin and stealthy ninja rolled into one. Mantids need to eat all the time, so they're very hungry. They're looking for prey all the time. They're on duty all day long. Turns out that they're one of the top rainforest predators. It's the T-Rex of the bug world. With a powerful stance and lethal forearms, spikes and lightning-fast grappling hooks ensure nothing escapes. The strike can happen anywhere from 30 to 50 thousandths of a second. So this is like 1 20th of a blink of an eye. Mantids engage in aggressive mimicry. And what this means is they camouflage themselves so their prey doesn't see them. Matching in with the vegetation, in this case our giant rainforest mantid, is a nice green, it blends in. Prey items that are walking by, they just don't see the mantid until it's simply too late. This hapless grasshopper never stood a chance. There's one more thing about the giant rainforest mantis. It eats its victims alive. They're pretty good at orienting their bites toward the head of whatever they've captured. And essentially, once you've taken the head off of anything, it stops struggling much more rapidly. The best defense against the mantis is to avoid it at all costs. But that's not always easy. This spiny leaf insect is out looking for a leafy meal. Unaware, it's venturing into giant rainforest mantis territory. The spiny leaf insect is a browser. It's a vegetarian. Think of it basically as the cow of the insect world. Just spends most of the day hanging out in the tree, chewing on the leaves, minding its own business. The leaf insect has attracted the attention of the mantis. 
And when these two giants of the rainforest come face to face, neither backs down. The mantis is the natural aggressor. It's sizing up the monster before it. No predator wants to be injured by its prey. If it's going to attack, it needs to uh, make a trade-off, basically. If it attacks something, is it going to successfully kill it and not get injured itself? Next, two giants collide. Beneath the lush rainforest canopy, two giants of the bug world are about to go head to head. In order to avoid a fight, the spotting leaf insect will actually use its bizarre appearance to try to look like this threatening, horrible alien monster. No predator wants to be injured by its prey. So in this case, you've got a really big rainforest mantid, but at the same time, the spiny leaf insect is really quite a large insect. The giant rainforest mantis has weighed the options. It's only a matter of choosing the moment to strike. We won't win. But with faith in its heavy armor, the spiny leaf insect pushes gamely forward. The mantis's powerful jaws start slicing through its victim. The heavy armor is holding. The spiny leaf insect deploys its chemical weaponry. In a fight, a spiny leaf insect is going to rely on its armor to hold out long enough for it to get away. But it's not very fast. It will, however, keep spraying the chemicals, but unless a predator gets a perfect shot and gets deterred by that, it's only a matter of time until it's dinner. The spiny leaf insect has to break free soon before it's devoured. Breaching the armor, the more the mantis eats, the less its victim can fight. It's a race through the first course. Mantis mouth parts work overtime as cutlery. Mandibles slice and dice, while feelers fork it in. Another life ends in the rainforest. What the mantis can't eat, others will. The giant mantis is happy to share now. It's full, and there's a mess to clean up.